The plumb bob plunges the deep. Its knotted cord measures out the quadrants and sets them turning. Yonder, from a lake stone door, the Milky Way emerges and pours its fluxes onto everything, connecting the above and below, the living and the dead. We pause before the great scaffold of our story and read from these mysterious knots in hopes of finding some guidance for our confounding lives. Everything empties emptiness. Through collaboration, stone, grass, birds, fish come into being and speak their words. the ground and raises the mountains. Forked with rivulets, the meadows excite the oaks and evergreens. Observe the prodigy of thought from all concerned. The wild geniuses of the wood, deer, bird, puma, jaguar, viper. The guardians of the thicket, cackle and cluck. Consider these to be the architects who design the dwelling of the co-extensive nest you call the earth. Listen to their words take shape. The 20 days rise and fall, ushering in each new configuration. Que Camille Toc Si Bad E A Ish Sikin Agmak No Tihash Kawuk Punapu Imosh Ik Akbal Kat Kan Kame tell it all. And maybe I do take a few liberties. So let's just follow the story of the hero twins, Hunapu and Spalanke. How did they come into being? What did they do that was so remarkable? <laughs>
I am just the skull of one Unakhu. What's all this yammering about? My fathers, the lords of death, have forbidden me to eat from this tree. My brother and I were sacrificed and buried in the ball court. The lords cut off my head and it grew in this tree. But you look delicious, and I am going to eat you. Don't you have eyes in your head? I am not a fruit, and you must not want what I have to offer. Oh, but I do, I do. I do want it so. Very well, then. It's your funeral. Just stick out your palm. Ha! <laughs> But suddenly I do feel a little wobbly in the knees. I have given you a sign. My head has no meat on it anymore. That is what kings and convicts come to. When the beautiful flesh is gone, it exposes a fear in the bones. But if you have understanding, know that you live on in others. Trust me now and be well on the face of the earth. The dreadful lords of death found out about Little Blood's pregnancy.
So they sent owls to cut her heart out. In those days, every line fed into the jaws of those triumphant lords. Every life ended with their hideous grins and grotesque laughter. That is, until Little Blood gave them a taste of their own medicine. The twins I carry are your grandchildren. They will ease the pain of loss and take good care of you as you grow old. What is this nonsense? You think you can con an old bird like me? I'm on to your tricks. Saying it so, just won't cut it. You'll have to prove your bona fides around here. Okay. Just tell me how I can prove I am your loving daughter, and that I bring you two grandsons to be. Well, let's see what metal you're made of, or if it's all talk. I'll do whatever you ask, if only you will believe me. Well, I won't ask for much. See that milpa down there full of corn? I only see one spindly corn plant over there. So, you take this net here and go fill it to the brim with lots of sweet corn cobs. She is a sweetheart, but how can I act the part of loving mother? For if she knows my feelings, those beauties she is carrying will someday discover their true identity. If they do, then they will surely be killed by the lords of death, just like my poor children, one punaku 
and seven Ulakhu, their fathers who died before them in Shivaza. No, if I cannot convince her to go straight away, then I will keep all of them off the track of their true destiny. By sleight of hand, I will distract the children by telling them that they must become farmers to help feed the family, so that they never go near the dreaded ball court of the Great Abyss. What is that crazy old coot up to? How can I gather a net full of corn from a spindly plant that has only a couple of ears? She's trying to get rid of me. <coughs>
Hands of wondrous trick, brother. Making the hoe, panic, axe, and toasting, plant the seeds, and dig the earth. Even as we take all the credit. Here, rub a little dirt on your face so it looks more plausible. <laughs> Which brings me to the business at hand, dear brother. All day long, pretend to work, and the crops dutifully come up. Why then, the next stage, we discover that somebody has totally cleaned us out. That's why tonight we're hiding in the bushes to catch the culprits. Red handed! You wear the face you make, you rat! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! It's not my fate to die by your hands! Then tell us why you and the others come down from the sky every night to devour our crops. Okay, but first, just give me a little bite to eat. Mm. No, you tell us first. Then we'll see about your food. Oh. All right, all right! What will you watch it with the net? It's not your job to tend the milk up. Your ball players like your father's one huna foo and seven huna foo before you. Their ball rings and gloves are hidden under your grandmother's roof. She was afraid if you discovered this diverting gang, you'd die in Shibaba just like they did. You mean we're not farmers? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so it wasn't that kind of ball. Or that kind of game. Close, but no cigar. Mis amigos, I told you I may have taken a few liberties. In any case, all the weird lords were even more upset than usual. Someone up top was playing ball right over their heads. And they were gonna make them pay for making so much bloody noise. So they told their messenger owls to fly off and invite those two boys down for a friendly game. Tell them they can take their own equipment and that we really want to play with them. <laughs> Afterward, they basked in the afterglow for what seemed an eternity, just sticking their tongues in and out and rubbing their bodies all over with delight at the delicious prospect before them. <laughs>
the spy. Tom, talk, talk.